I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's good, it's Shell Tron here, and I'm back at it again with a brand new video. And I'ma keep it as real as I can be. This game against the Houston Texans today was very, very hard to watch at some moments. And the most beautiful thing in the world in other moments. And that's not just talking about what the Panthers did. I mean, both teams at times look to have a really good flowing offense. Things are moving for both teams. You saw some really good runs, some really good passes, some really good scheming to get some mismatches on defense, to get some really good passes in there. Then you mix that up with some bad decision making from Deshaun Watson and some very, very horrible, untimely strip sack fumbles from Kyle Allen, I promise you. I, I feel like every time Kyle Allen got a stank eye, he, he saw it the wrong way. That ball was coming out of his hand, but huh, won't bluff me. Panthers win 16 to 10, and I promise you one thing. I promise you one thing. If Kyle Allen could have held on to those balls, we could have won by 30. Where do I start? Let's start with defense. Because defense wins championships, and defense definitely won this game, although we saw some great things from the offense. I'll get to that here in a second. The defense was spectacular, immaculate, glorious. I mean, what, what, what can I say? What can I say? We got some dogs. We got some dogs in the front seven. Who do I start with? Brian Burns, maybe? I mean, the past three weeks, he's had some really, really, really good performances. Only half a sack in this one, but he was playing both with his hand in the dirt in the 4-3, and as a linebacker. So he has some really good versatility that he brings to the defense. But we're not gonna focus too much on Brian Burns today because there was a lot of other guys, some dogs out there, who put in work. Shaq Thompson led the team in tackles at 12 total. He had a sack. Mario Addison, he had two sacks. This man is going a, <laughs> Mario Addison wants a bag this upcoming love, man. Mario Addison wants to get paid. He is a sack machine. Vernon Butler had a sack in this game. Vernon Butler said, oh, captain, my captain, I'm sorry for being a bust in the first round for the last, what, three years now. Can I please start to contribute for the team now, sir? K1 Short was out. We needed someone to do something. Not going to lie to you. Vernon Butler, one sack, only one tackle the whole game. He way overperformed. I, that's all I can ask for you. Get, get one sack in the game. Even if it's your only tackle the whole game, I'm cool with it, Vernon Butler. You did your job. All right? Down the list some more. I mean, we had five sacks. We had four passes defended. And we did pretty good for a team that did not have Dante Jackson playing. I was kind of worried because Will Fuller for the Texans is a fast guy. He hasn't been really doing all that much of anything in his career, apart from his first year, I think. But he is still a threat. I thought maybe with Dante out, we'd have some problems. <clears throat> nope. Ross Cockrell, proving that he was brought onto the team last year for a very good reason, and he couldn't play, he couldn't go for obvious reasons, but he showed that when his number's called, it, there's, no, there's no moment too big for him. Not a single moment too big for him. Now, he did not get a pick on a Sean Watson. No. This man, Ross Cockrell, was looking in the backfield while the Houston Texans incident, one of the dumbest things I've seen over the past three, four weeks. Let me go ahead and paint you a picture. Last week, Deshaun Watson had 300 plus yards. He was the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. We had this man in a Snuggie. We had him in a brown paper bag. We had him in a box. Deshaun Watson could not do anything. So what did the Texans do? They said, hold up. If Deshaun Watson can't pass the ball, how about we see if DeAndre Hopkins can pass? And they got to an answer very quickly. He's garbage at passing. He just can't throw the ball. Ross Cockrell got a gift. The ball just fell in his hands. Like it was, he's like, oh, do I, do I just go ahead and run this back off that garbage throw? And that's what he did. And speaking of some really good plays in the secondary without Dante in the game, which I hope we do get him back for next week, James Bradbury looked really good against D-Hop as well. D-Hop stats will not make you very proud of this man. And he is one of the best receivers in the league. He was held to five receptions on eight targets 
for 41 total yards. <laughs> 41 total yards, no touchdowns. Please tell me with a straight face that James Bradbury is not one of the elite corners in the league right now. He is shutting down great uh, elite receivers. Now, he doesn't get the interceptions and whatnot, but he plays tight on these dudes. And honestly, no one for the Texans really did anything receiving-wise. Kenny Stills was the second best receiver, and he went out very, very early with a quad injury. Maybe it was a, ham I think it was a hamstring injury. He was looking pretty good early. Will Fuller only got three catches. Duke Johnson, they were, I, I can't really say all that much about the passing game for the Texans, and that's because we got some dogs in the front seven, and we got some, we got some really good guys back there in coverage for the Panthers. I mean, we also saw JV and Elliott, our nickel, come in and get half a sack himself. But then we had just guys everywhere doing everything. But we can't sit here and talk about someone being everywhere doing everything without bringing up Christian McCaffrey. This man, Christian McCaffrey, C-Mac, Run CMC, whatever you want to call him, 27 rushes for 93 yards and a touchdown, 10 catches, 86 yards, no touchdowns, but 10 catches on 10 targets is... By my math, and I went to public school, that's perfect. Christian is making his case right now that he is, if not a top two running back in the league, then he might just be the best running back in the league. He's not just a receiving guy. He's not just an outside kind of scat back. He can go between the tackles. He can do whatever it takes. And he had a really good block today, too. He probably had a couple, but there was one in particular that I remember that he looked really, really good to pick up. And it was like on a third down, I believe. We got a first down on. It was one of our conversions there. He can do a lot. Now, I don't want him out there blocking all the time. We had uh, Alex Arma in the backfield sometimes blocking. But still, Christian is a capable blocker in certain situations. So I'm not too mad about that. Now, I am going to say one thing about Christian. Late in the game, when the game was already sealed, we already knew that the game was over. Why are we keeping Chris McCaffrey in the game? I, well, why, not just, why not just bring in Reggie Bonifant? Why not bring in Jordan and just say, look, guys, just hold the ball as tight as you can. Run through this gap right here and just make sure the ball does not come out. We're just trying to waste some time right now. Just hold on to the ball. It seems to me that this coaching staff is really intent on getting Christian that 1,000 thousand yard mark for both catching and running so I can't really be all that upset about it but I will say that record better be worth the possibility of you know Christian taking a little bit too many hits some unnecessary hits on his body later on in his career I won't get on that because that's kind of depressing news and this is a really really good day can I speak a little bit more on Kyle Allen in our receiving core today. Now, Kyle Allen had some really weird moments. There are moments, like I said, where he looked great, like maybe even a starting quarterback. And then there are times that you're reminded, okay, that 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 guy probably, he's, he's one of the best backup kind of guys in the league, probably. I mean, 24 for 34, 232, no touchdowns, but also no interceptions. Those fumbles were an issue, but they ended up not amounting to much because the Texans' offense was either garbage or our defense was immaculate. Probably a strong mix of the two coming together in equal measure. But even still, it wasn't like Kyle Allen was being carried by the defense because he was making some good reads. I saw some really good decision-making on his part, making reads, looking off guys, and usually finding the right guy and putting the ball right where it needed to be, whether it was an open pass or it was a really tight window that he had to just slip in there. There was one on the right sideline, I think to to uh, Jarius Wright, where the defender, he, he tipped the ball. His hand was right there. It was a tight window. One of the tightest windows you're ever going to find. And Kyle Allen made that throw. I was, hey, I'm not going to lie to you. There were some times he looked kind of not that great, but tch, I'll take this kind of performance from Kyle Allen and know that this could be, with a good defense, a winning strategy. And you think about the way he spread the ball around. Jarius Wright, five receptions, six targets, for 59 yards, DJ had three catches on five targets. Curtis had three catches on seven targets. And Greg Olson only had two receptions on four targets for five yards. That's kind of crazy because we saw last week, we saw Curtis Samuel and Greg Olson were our top two guys. And DJ Moore only got two receptions. We didn't see Christian McCaffrey get more than, what was it, like three or four receptions in that last game against the Cardinals. So it's very, very obvious to me that Kyle is looking for the open receiver 
every play, and he's not getting his eyes glued on one guy. One week, he might completely ignore Christian McCaffrey. The next week, he might go to him most of all and ignore Greg Olson. And then look at Curtis. Or say, you know what, Curtis, you're good right there. But Darius Wright, he looks more open. There was a couple overthrows, but nothing too bad. I think that for the most part, Kyle Allen had a really great game. But you know what did not have a great game? Those god-awful uniform jersey combinations. The, 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 the jerseys and the pants were bad. I ain't gonna lie to you, the, the white jersey with the black pants does not look good. And that's about really the only thing, other than those fumbles, that I had a problem with. It seemed like everything else was working out pretty well for us. I felt like the O-line blocked pretty well. There was a scare at one moment where <laughs> we saw we saw uh, Taylor Moten go down for a play, and then we saw uh, Dennis Daly come in. I was scared for a moment. There was also another moment where Eric Reed was hurt, and we saw my favorite player, Colin Jones, come in for a minute. I said, hold up. Colin Jones, give him the opportunity. We'll get two pick sixes on one play. I thought we were going to see Colin Jones rack up a couple MVP votes. Didn't get his shot. He was only in for like one, two plays. So, it is what it is. Eric Reed did. He did, he did, he did good. I mean, he's no, he's no Colin Jones. But Eric Reed had a good game himself. This was an all-around effort. Great plays from the defense. I, this, uh, who on the defense did not have a good game? Name me one player on the defense who did not have a good Name me one player on the defense who didn't get a sack. <laughs> I don't know. What can I say? There was dudes up and down the rosters. There was a there was a line. There was a line with a with a with a valet and usher. I think I saw a dude taking tickets and checking appointments. Like, hmm, no, you're not scheduled for your Deshaun Watson sack until next quarter, sir. Please wait back in line. We will we will bring you in when it's your turn to sack Deshaun Watson. And please keep an orderly file line. We need we need order here because the next guy will be coming in to sack Deshaun Watson very, very shortly. Other than that, man, I was very, very impressed by the Panthers' defense, offense, special teams, Joey Sly. Ah, perfection. I don't know what to say. Is Joey Sly going to do Joey Sly things? What do you expect? Greatness. That's what I expect. Let me know all your thoughts, what you saw, favorite moments, things that surprised you. Things that did not surprise you. What were your thoughts on James Bradbury keeping this man, D-Hop, in a Snuggie? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know what to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win. 